Hi, welcome along to Barbecue Life, the only YouTube channel dedicated to the Audi Camaro. Today we are going to be cooking pork belly burnt ends. So today we have got a really simple and easy cook. Um, it's ideal for if you you're new to low and slow because if we can't if you don't get temperatures down really low, it can still work. So I've started off, I've just got supermarket bought pork belly slices. So these have come from Asda. They've cost me under three and a half quid. So this is a great cook that if it does go wrong for you guys, um, it's not cost you a load of money. So the first thing we need to do with this pork belly is we need to remove the skin because we don't need the skin for this cook. So there's two different ways you can do it. You can do the pull back the skin method where we've got the skin in our hand with our pork belly sort of standing upright and we're pulling it back and slicing away at the top. Or you can flip it up the other way, where again we've still got hold of the skin itself, but we've got the pork belly above it. Now this I think is my probably preferred method because you've got a nice hard service surface to be pushing up against so that we keep the fat on the pork belly and we're just taking the skin off of it. So to do this, you make a, a cut into it and then you push in your knife down into your chopping board as best as possible just gently pulling across and just taking that skin away so once we've got the skin off we need to get it chopped up now ideally if we was using a whole slab of pork belly i would say we want cubes that are about uh, an inch and a half square but we've not got a slab of pork belly we're doing it the cheap cheap version so we just want to try and keep our pieces as uniform as possible so I'm just going about an inch and a half on each of these slices and they're probably just under an inch thick so they're a little bit um, skinny one way but they're still going to be an inch and a half long and we need to keep them this sort of size because when we do that low and slow initial cook they are going to shrink a bit if you cut them to an inch to begin with you can end up with just over half an inch at the end and it's not enough you want more of this porky goodness in your mouth so an inch and a half cut is just about right so once we've got these all cut to that inch and a half i'm just i've put it back into the plastic container um that they came from from the supermarket and we just want to add a little bit of mustard for a binder so we're just going to squirt a little bit of mustard in there get into our hand massage that through and make sure that all of so all of the sides of the pork belly are covered in the mustard and then we can go back to our chopping board lay them out nice and uniform and we want to go on with our rubs so today i'm using two different rubs so i'm using core powder from the rusty barbecue company this is my go-to uh, barbecue rub just a standard barbecue rub and then we're using a rub that i've used in a previous video that i'm absolutely in love with at the moment and that is the honey monster from Angus and Oink, and that is an Angus and Oink and uh, Alton's Barbecue World uh, collaboration. I was really kind of Alton's Barbecue World to chuck that in my bag last time I was over there buying some bits. So that's our two rubs, and we just want to go sort of 50 50. So we just go on with one, and then we go on with the other, and then we want to turn everything over and go on with one and go on with the other again. And then just for them sort of short sides instead of standing them up all up on their end and going on again we've got plenty of rub left on this chopping board so you can just kind of dab around and pick them up because again this channel is all about value so we could stand them up and then go in with more and then we're wasting more rub towards the end so i just like to mop up as best i can off of that chopping board um, and then we're saving some pennies at the end of the day so we've got that all covered now so we want to go into the fridge for about an hour while we set up our Kamado so we're using the Audi Kamado today if you've got any other Kamado then this is going to work exactly the same so we want to get our Kamado lit so I've gone in with a little bit of new charcoal but predominantly um, used charcoal you can reuse your charcoal um, providing you knock the ash off of it and it has stayed dry so this is what makes these Kamados fantastic is that at the end of a cook you can just shut down your vents your charcoal goes out and you can reuse it for your next cook so you still want to pull out the very small pieces and we want to make sure that all the ash is off of there if the ash isn't off of there then it won't reignite and then you're going to have issues so i just knock it about in the bottom take all the small pieces out a few new pieces in the top and then i go in with a little wax woody and light it up 
So because we're doing low and slow today, we're just using one wax woody because we don't want a big roaring temperature um, to begin with. We just need it nice and slow. So put that woody in, light it. Once it's gone out, leave it open for just another couple of minutes just to let that charcoal really breathe and start to ignite. And then we want to go in with our heat deflector. So we get that into place, shut the uh, lid of the Kamado down and we open the hinge on that daisy wheel all the way around and we open our bottom vent all the way up. So this gives us maximum airflow through the Kamado and it helps that charcoal take and we need that because we need to warm up the ceramic of the Kamado itself. So sort of 10-ish minutes you need to be going along keeping an eye on that um, temperature in the dome because it's not going to be giving you an accurate temperature at the moment because the metal can conduct the heat much quicker but once that gets up sort of around 200 that's when we want to start dialing our vents back put your hand on the side of the dome and you're going to feel that your dome is starting to warm up and be warm to the touch on the outside and this we know that we've heated our ceramic up and we can really start to dial in those temperatures so for a low and slow we use the bottom vent with the little hole, so like the inner vent. Make sure you lock it over the two little locking ports over the side. And we want to go just one row of dots. And then our daisy wheel at the top, we go hardly open at all. And this gives us minimal airflow into the Komodo, which keeps our temperature down low. And we're aiming for anywhere between about 110 degrees C and 135 degrees C. So I did that with my charcoal today and it sat at 123 degrees. So bang in the middle of where we're talking. If we go slightly over to 135, it's no great loss. And if we're staying under about 110, then it's no great loss. Outside of that temperature range, we either want to be bringing our temperature up or trying to cool things down before we put our meat on. So we're sitting at that 123 and we're going to pop our um, pork on. Before we do that we need to make sure that we get a nice chunk of smoking wood in there. So I'm using apple wood today so we just want to lift that deflector up quickly, drop a chunk of apple wood in there, let that ignite and then we're going to get our pork belly on. So I'm just laying it out on the rack trying to keep it over the deflector as much as possible because there is quite a high fat content in this and if it's not over the deflector and our charcoal spreads out from the middle out to the outside and we've got fat dropping down you are going to get things like flare-ups that can increase the temperature inside your Komodo and it is going to char the bottom of the meat which isn't what we are going for today. So try and keep things over the deflector as much as possible. So we shut the lid and we leave it for two hours just rolling in that smoke come out every now and again and just double check your temperature make sure it's not running away from you and make sure it's not dropping too much as i say between 110 and 135. so leave it for two hours after that two hours we're going to open the kamado up again and as you can see it's set that bark on the outside so the rub has fully been absorbed into the meat and it it's got a I don't know how to explain it any more than it's got a bark on the outside to anybody that doesn't know what a bark is. So it's just, it's harder on the outside, but it's still soft on in the middle. So we've not completely cremated it. We've just set the outside of these uh, pieces of pork belly. So once your bark has set in, if you've had your Komodo sit at 110, then you might get to two hours and it might not quite be there. So then you're going to want to be leaving it on for just maybe 20 minutes or half an hour extra and then come out and check it. If yours has been running at 135, then you might want to check it just before the two hour mark because we don't want um, to dry this pork belly out if our temperature's been running a bit higher. So now we need to go with our aluminium pans. So I picked up a pack of 10 aluminium pans off of Amazon and they cost me 9.99. I'll make sure I leave a link down below and that is an affiliate link so I will get a small kickback to the channel at no extra cost to you guys. So we've taken that aluminium pan and we've put our pork belly in the bottom we just want to spread it out all across the bottom of the tray. Now first thing we're going to go in with is some butter. So you can use standard butter here. I've used mousse maple butter so this is butter that is infused with uh, maple syrup to make it sweeter. Again I picked this up at Alton's Barbecue World before Christmas. And it's just going to help add a bit of sweetness to um, these pieces of pork belly. So we're just going to go in with a few little teaspoons here and there. And that's just going to melt across the top and infuse a bit of fat back in 
that we've cooked out and a bit of sweetness in there as well. Next, we wanna go on with a little bit of Worcester sauce or Henderson sauce if you're from up north in the UK. So a few splashes of that on there. Now we're going on with our barbecue sauce. So for our barbecue sauce today, I've used the Rusty Barbecue Company's Sweet Heat barbecue sauce. And this I find is absolutely fantastic with something like burnt ends because you've got the sweetness there, but it's got a nice bit of kick at the back of the palate. You can use your favorite rubs and you can use your favorite barbecue sauce. At no point do you need to be sticking to exactly what I'm doing here. The, the good thing with um, pork belly burnt ends is that you can change your rubs up and you can change your sauces up and get a different um, end result. So with that barbecue sauce, we're going on with about half the bottle. It might sound a lot, but we want to make sure that we've got things covered in the bottom of this pan. Uh, we also want to go on with about a tablespoon of uh, apple cider vinegar. And this acid is just going to help tenderize things while we're cooking. And if at this point, you feel that you've not got enough sauce, you can go in with a little splash of boiling water just to loosen things up and help coat things all the way over. So I did add just a splash of boiling water just before I put it back on the barbecue because we're steaming anyway and that water is going to steam out and just leave all the flavours of everything else behind. So we've got everything in, we've tossed it through with our tongs making sure that everything is covered and now we want to get a bit of tin foil and we want to completely cover the top of that tray bar in one little corner. So I tend to completely tuck everything in and then I just fold a little corner back so there's about a centimetre from corner to where the foil is that's not covered it. And this is just gonna let our steam evaporate out. So we're still keeping a nice steamy environment but we're not gonna be overly steaming everything that goes in there. If you keep it sealed, there's gonna be nowhere for that steam to go. You're gonna be boiling everything away while it's on the barbecue and you're just gonna lose all that bark by doing it this way, the bark stays. So you're gonna have that nice texture of when you bite into something that's a little bit harder on the outside, a little bit chewier on the outside, and wonderfully soft in the middle. So we're going back on the barbecue for an hour with that little steam vent open. So again, if you're running a little bit hotter at the 135, you're gonna to wanna to be just under an hour. If you're running a bit slower, lower, sorry, then you're gonna to need to be on there slightly longer but after that hour i take it off peel the foil back and i just go in with my temperature probe and i'm not checking for temperature i'm checking for tenderness if it's really soft then we are spot on at this point you want to take your foil off open your vents up just slightly because we want about 150 to 160 degrees c now for 15 to 20 minutes and this is just going to set the glaze off across the top of um, the pork belly so we've used it to tenderize everything and now we just want it to really be sticking on there we don't want to be picking it up and for everything to run off we want it to stick to each individual piece of pork belly so after that 15 minutes we can go in you can see that it's nicely set and it's time to take it off plate it up and give it a bite so there's so many different variations that you can end up with for your end product just depending on what sort of rub you put on to begin with and what barbecue sauce you put on and things like that so you can cook them once and then you can completely change it up when you cook it again. So let's give these a bite. Now I have already taken these inside and um, started devouring them. And then my missus went, have you done your bit to camera you do at the end of your video? I'm like, no, I got too excited. So uh, here we go. So you do get a nice kick of heat from that barbecue sauce. but It's not too um, harsh. It just sort of sits at the back of the palate and just warms up. They are sweet. These are not something that uh, you want to be eating if you're looking to lose some weight because there's a lot of sugar and fat and things in these, but they are so good. So you put that in and that just melts in your mouth. Even if you've got like a larger piece of fat left on there, it's just gelatinous and it just melts as soon as it goes in your mouth and you start to chew, it just melts away. It's unbelievable. Um, I've got to do these more often because I just don't cook them enough. So if you like what we're doing here at Barbecue Life, then please do subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you like the video and leave me a comment underneath. Let me know what you think. If you've got a brand new Audi Camado, make sure you join the Facebook community and share your cooks on there. If you've got any questions, there's a load of people on there that have also got an Audi Camado. So a nice pool of um, people to answer your questions. And thank you very much for watching.